Okay guys, let's talk about Bill Gates and how to lie with statistics. So I'm sure most of you have probably either seen the news interview that he did on public television or at least seen images or memes um, showing how when he did that interview he was um, obviously strategically um, displaying his little short stack of books and the most uh, the book on top of his list, which means the book that he was reading, was How to Lie with Statistics. Every summer, I try to do a little extra reading. Here's a few books I've read recently that you might enjoy. On Immunity by Eula Biss. She explains the history of vaccination, why children who don't get vaccinated can even affect those who are vaccinated. She's a very good writer. I wish I could write as nicely as she writes. Should we meet by Vaslav Shmiel? It's provocative the way he does the title, as though passing the responsibility to the reader, where we know it's pretty hard for people to give up meat. There are books that touch on this topic that don't have numbers in them, but, you know, this is Schmiel. You are going to get the numbers. He might even get a few sentences in between the numbers. How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff. Being able to understand what you're looking at and being willing to say, hey, where did that come from? Is that accurate? It's a quick read. It's got a lot of good examples in it. It's a trip to the past, even though the basic points it makes are still as valid today. And um, so most everybody just automatically assumes that, you know, oh, it's nefarious. You know, that, that shows that he's doing something shady. And of course, Bill Gates is a world-class criminal, but that book itself is does not actually, so you can't judge a book by its cover or by its title. Um, the truth is that's a, a pretty renowned book um, for basically outlining how to not be fooled by um, fraudulent statistics or what is known as bad science. And um, I know most of my audience, you guys probably won't be interested in this, but I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. I'm going to give you a short preview of this excellent video, absolutely ex excellent video by a statistic statistician um, explaining in depth the premises that, um, that bad science will uh, utilize in things um, such as pharmaceutical research, um, you know, news, news reports, all sorts of different examples of how they use statistics to manipulate for propaganda and disinformation and all of that type of stuff. So I will leave a, a amazing video in the description down below. But so again, to summarize the point is that no, that book doesn't actually teach you how to lie with statistics. It teaches how people lie, it teaches how people lie with statistics. Um, and so I'm going to show you again the link to the video that will show you and teach you how to not be fooled by bad science and by fake science. But I know most of my audience probably has no interest in any of that. But this is crucial, fundamental, foundational knowledge of how to do high quality research, high quality um, data information sourcing, and basically how to do good science, how to engage in good science, which is extremely important um, if you want to be uh, taken seriously in the debate about um, COVID-19 disinformation, as well as any other disinformation campaigns that are going to be coming out. Um, involving Bill Gates, you know, people like Fauci, public health scams, public scamdemics, um, you know, all, all sorts of areas of public health, you know, diet nutritional science has been a big one for decades now. Um, you know, it all basically started out with the big tobacco industry, um, big tobacco, um, doubt, doubt is their product, you know, and, and then basically carried over into the, their other main branch, their other main arm of disinformation and propaganda, which has been the animal agriculture industry, which many people are now um, catching on to and familiar with. Most people are have caught on to and are familiar more than familiar with the big pharma um, disinformation, uh, fake science, bad bad science, fake science um, scams, things like that. Insurance insurance scams. You know, it, it spans all walks, you know, all areas of life. Um, but so anyways, um, I highly recommend you guys check out this video. I highly recommend you watch the entire thing and I highly recommend that you actually study this and understand it because I know most of my audience is mostly just a, you know, oh, my intuition though, oh, nobody cares about science, oh, science is all fake, science is all fraud. This is gonna teach you the actual ins and outs, the details, the how, the why, how it all happens, 
It's inc extremely crucial. It's extremely important, extremely critical information. You know, this isn't just a game where it's, oh, my intuition, I already knew intuitively though. No, this is how to actually engage, to formulate compelling arguments to convince other people of what is of what is true using or to actually debate the actual evidence and the actual real you know science the actual data itself and um so it's it's extremely important for those of you who have seen you know the videos from my health and nutrition series playlist i'll leave that in the links in the description down below as well you know things like um what i've learned from the ex-vegan carnivore debate which is a very important video as well um highlighting this huge you know ex-vegans going carnivore diet and the you know the low carbers versus you know whole food plant-based debate that was a huge thing before all of this you know scamdemic um took control of everyone's minds and of the social media sphere and everything so um, incredibly important information, how to lie with statistics, how to not be fooled by statistics, and how to engage in good science and to practice um, good research and good science. So um, thanks for your time, guys. I highly recommend checking it out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace. It doesn't teach you how to lie with st statistics, but rather how we can be lied to with statistics. Even in 2019, we are routinely misled by crafty media spin doctors, marketers, politicians, and newspapers daily with statisticulation, just as much as it was in 1954 when this book was written. We make purchasing decisions and form opinions on any number of topics based on data analysis done by others. If you're one of those people who buy a particular brand of toothpaste because four out of five dentists recommended it in the commercial, then we might have a bit of work to do. Statistical thinking will one day be as necessary for efficient citizenship as the ability to read and write. H.G. Wells Think of statistics as a way to make sense of information from data. Think of it as a framework for thinking, for reaching insights and solving problems. Numbers by itself means very little unless we provide some context behind it. This makes statistics part math, part science, and part art. We need to be able to describe data and infer meaning from it. These are the two fundamental challenges of statistics because we can make mistakes in our interpretation. People tend to become much more reluctant to offer credence when they encounter a statistic that is incongruent with their own beliefs. In contrast, those same people are remarkably less scrutinizing when it suits them. Let us examine Huff's messages in an attempt to understand why this book has achieved such notoriety and fame. In a time where big data, big science, and analytics are ascending in the business world, it behooves us to review statistical concepts. For those of you who enjoy statisticulating and numbers, I plan to have future book reviews on that topic which will go more into depth. For everyone else, at least some degree of statistical literacy is important. And How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Hoff is a book without complex mathematics and equations for those of you who fear math. This book will serve as a basic conceptual guide that anyone can follow. Sample size. We spoke previously about the built-in bias in a sample and that the sample should be representative of the population and randomly selected. We need to ensure that the sample is also large enough to draw conclusions about the population. How often have you seen YouTubers tell us how to do a diet or how to use a product based on their N of 1? They use their small samples and draw a sensational headline. You intuitively know that one person's opinion is not enough. Duff reminds us to be suspicious of a small sample. If you take information with a grain of salt, and hopefully it's because you have developed a critical skeptical mind, which in my opinion is a very good thing. Acting on all different types of information thrown at you or forming an opinion requires an understanding of statistics and some math. For that reason, I think this book is more of almost like a pre-statistics book to help people conceptually understand some statistical topics. Following this book, I hope people are further interested to deepen their understanding of basic statistics from other sources. 
If you do read this book, expect to see examples that are emblematic of the 1950s and before that, and nothing from 2019. But the general concepts still apply. But some of the things I also didn't cover that the author reminds us about is to check the labels on graphs and photos for signs of manipulation of the truth. Fast forward to 2019, everywhere you look, is in, you'll see infographics, so be discerning and check the labels. A framework the author offers his readers consists of five questions to ask. Use these questions to stare down a statistic. 1. Who says so? 2. How does he know? 3. What's missing? 4. Did somebody change the subject? And 5. Does it make sense? So again, my name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at patreon.com slash lifting the veil. And um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content and I will see you guys in the next video. I rely solely on word of mouth and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore. My channel has literally been completely restricted. So I rely on your help by sharing my work around if you appreciate it and uh, leave me your comments. I definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff. And I will see you in the next video.